Hey everybody, so today we're going to look at for loops. I did a previous video about for loops, uh, but it was a, uh, a short one. Uh, so I'm going to try to do that when I talk about these topics. I'm going to cover a few other things like functions, recursion, um, variables, if statements, or conditionals. Um, so I'll try to do shorts and uh, just short versions of those topics, and then have a kind of a longer one with a Jupyter notebook that'll that'll go with it. Uh, so this one is going to be about for loops, and so for loops is pretty much iterating over a set of items. Uh, in this case, and in, in most of these examples, or actually all of these examples, we'll be looking at iterating over a list, but you can iterate over um, uh, strings and, and, and tuples and, and other things. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, so the first one is iter iterating over this prime numbers list, which we call simple list. And uh, what we're going to do is do for i and simple list. i is the, the iterator, uh, and i is going to first be assigned to. It's going to print that to, and then it's going to move to the second item, which is three. It's going to assign that to, to, to the uh, i, and then we're going to print that i. And then at the end, outside of that loop, we'll print uh, 29. So I'm going to click Shift Enter. And then you can see it iterates through that list and prints that final value. I like this example because I think it's a nice visual way to see that as well. So you, you have a building, or that's what our list is called, and then the items within that building. So we say for room type in building. Room type is going to be assigned classroom for the first uh, loop, and then it's going to print that value, and then it's going to assign cafeteria, print that value, and so on through the rest of the list. I'll do shift enter and you can see that as an output. Okay, so then uh, these few uh, items here are just showing you the uh, the fact that you can use functions and some other cool things within uh, for loops. You can do uh, even conditional statements and we'll look at that as well. For loops are really, really powerful and can get really complex. I mean, you can have nested for loops with conditionals in them and then while loops. So things can get very, very complicated. But I th I'm hoping that by giving you this overview that you can kind of get the idea and uh, having this knowledge could allow you to build those more complicated um, uh, programs or, or those more complicated uh, code. So we have here building... Uh, we have our room types, and for index, and this so this code, the enumerator function is going to give us an index, and we say the start value over here. So we say start equals one for this example. We run this, you can see we got index as the print and room type uh, printed out as well, and outside of that for loop, we print done. So we got one as the index, classroom two, cafeteria, and so on. Here's another cool um, function you can use, so format. So if we uh, click shift enter, you can see that it formats that those variables uh, in this string. And you can see in the curly braces that it's uh, that's where it's putting index and room type. Iterating, iterating over list while removing items from it. So this is uh, something that you don't typically want to do, and I, I've found issues with it, and I've found Stack Overflow posts talking about not doing that, and if we run that, you can kind of see what the issue is. So we have four I and simple list. It's looping through the simple list. We're going to print that simple list so that we can visualize what's happening to it, because here we're removing I, uh, which first i or iteration would be one so it'll remove the item starting with one and then it'll pin that item to a new list the first time it runs it it goes perfect because it appends one and it removes uh, an item from that list but when it gets the second parts and this is me trying to kind of visualize it so we've got our full list and it, it grabs the first item it pins it to the new list moves to the second item which now is two instead of five uh, and it pins that to the list so you can see where we kind of got messed up there moves on outside of the list and uh, ends 
and it, it can't append nothing because there's no, nothing's there. So we're left with a list like this. Uh, to get around that, here's the list function, and if we just do shift run, you can see uh, the the simple list getting the items removed from it, and then our new list left with it. And so, and here's simple list, it's empty now. And so we've got our original list and we have our copy of list, which is what that list function does, as far as I know. And you can kind of see what it's doing. It's appending those items and it's 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 using the uh, the copied list to to pull those items. And if I if I if I understand, I think it's removing the items from the original list. So um, but if anybody has more information on that, uh, feel free to, to leave a comment. Uh, returns list of bulls and nested for loops. So in this one, we have a list of lists. Uh, and I've tried to name these variables so that it's a, it's somewhat clear on what's going on because this is important. Uh, the uh, spaces and stuff uh, is important in this one because, uh, it, it, because of that, it will format or it'll structure our list correctly because if we were to create like this sub list outside up here uh, we would end up with a flattened list which we don't want so anyways uh, having items like this nested within the for loops is important and where that happens is important uh, but anyways what we're going to do here is we're going to return a list of bulls uh, and we're going to return and we're using nested for loops in here to kind of achieve that because we want to keep the structure that we see here, which is a list of lists because we want a list of bool lists pretty much. So I'm going to run this just so you can visually see it. Um, so you, we have a list with sub list uh, with booleans in them. So true, true, false in that first one, false, true, true in the second and so on through the rest of the list. And so what we do is we say for list in list of lists. So it's going to iterate through and grab the first item, which is this item here. Okay. And then it's going to say for num in list. So then it's going to grab the first item there. It's going to say if num is less than 10, then sub list dot append true, which in this case is true. So it appends true to sub list, which is this list. And so, and since this doesn't have, since this list is up here, it's it's going to loop through the rest of these items, and when it's done with those items, it'll take this sub list, and then it'll append it to this bull list, and then it goes back through the whole cycle again until it finishes the entire sub list, or I mean all sub list, and then we get an output that looks like this. So I thought this was interesting. If you use filter by bool mass, then you, you're probably, or in Dynamo, you're probably familiar with uh, uh, working with lists like this. So I thought this was a cool way because we could easily get around this by just uh, avoiding appending true, and, and we can just append uh, the actual values uh, if we wanted like a structured uh, output of trues and false lists, which we'll look at at the end. Um, so we've got filter by bool list and output unstructured list. So the same thing that we did up there, we're going to pretty much flatten this list. So, um, or sorry, it's the same thing. We're looping through lists, but we're going to have an output of a flattened list. So it is different, but we are looping and we do have nested loops in it. And the, in this case, we're going to be using the sub bool list and then the sub list of nums in zip. Um, so in zip, bool list, and list of bools. Because we're going to be looping through this bool list that we just created. And we're going to be looping through the list of lists that we have up here. Uh, and then we're going to output the true list dot append number. So uh, this zip allows us to pretty much pair up these these values and then allow us to kind of loop through them uh, and you can see here we have also a conditional in there as well just like we did up here a cool thing about this is this is our output this is pretty much like running the true false list or the boolean list into filter by bool mask in dynamo and then we have an output of a true list and then we have our false list so these and these are both flattened lists 
um, so they do not keep the structure. Below is filter by bull mask. I mean, sorry, filter list and output structured list. So these are more like each other uh, because this example uh, pretty much does well, what this one does, except for has a little bit uh, more uh, to it because we want a structured list. So we have to create these true sub lists here nested underneath the first for loop kind of like what we did up here with this sub list and then um, that'll allow us to append everything so just like we did in that first example it's pretty much what we're doing here and if we run that you can see we've got nice structured list that we can use um, if you use dynamo you could you know the importance of like list management and having things in the correct order uh, because if you're trying to take maybe the sum of each, each of these lists and assign it to maybe a family or different items, uh, if that list structure is lost, things can get messed up quite a bit. And the same thing applies to uh, Python if you're working with um, some of the same items or doing this, you know, some of the same things. So I think it's useful to know that you have that option to keep the structure or output a flattened list. There's many, many ways to, to kind of handle that. All right, so return, filter, true nums, and false. So this is the same thing except for instead of dealing with any uh, true or, or any Booleans, what we're going to do is just um, append the, the number and not the, um, the Boolean. So you can see here we get the output, the same thing uh, like you see up here. Also, Definitely check this out and check, you know, check out this whole Jupyter notebook and run this stuff yourself and mess around with moving these these uh, these different lists, these different for loops, the, the conditionals and see what happens. It's a, a fantastic way to to learn about these and, and how they work. All right, so I wanted to mention while loops and while loops are kind of interesting because um, because you can use while loops just like you could use a for loop and you can use a for loop as a while loop as well. So they're vi vice versa. You can use both of them um, to achieve the same thing. Uh, I, I kind of think it's, it's all about readability. Some folks will say that they primarily only use for loops. Uh, but I, I think it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of about a readability because uh, if it, if you have a known amount in a list, then maybe a loop will work. But if it's an unknown, like if this is true or while this is true, continue to do this. Um, I think that makes more sense uh, readability wise coming back to it. But anyways, um, it's up to you. I guess it's it's preference to what you want to do, uh, but you can use both. Uh, they're, they're interchangeable. Um, so we have i equals one and we say for i or while i is less than six print i and down here and this is just a, an easy way to add i and one together so it'll continue to, to add those values together and you can see the output here so we have one two three four five so while i is less than six but Here's some kind of the same exact thing, uh, but this is a simple example uh, because we know what we want from this. Uh, we know the values, so this could easily be a for loop, just like we did here. We could just change that range to be um, something like this. And then we've pretty much recreated that while loop. But that's a simple example. Uh, down here is, I think, a, something a little bit better. So we have import random, which we're going to use to just randomize a value. And we say building is operating equals true. So that building's operating. And at any point when it hits a certain quota, it ends. But we don't know when that's going to happen. That's where the random comes in. So we say while building is operating and currently it's set to true we're gonna say count and this is just gonna tell us how many items have been created during the day and we say if counts is equal equal to true and then I just say item created instead of items created so that's all this if else statement does um, and then down here we 
we print um, this just prints a new line but we could just do new line instead and I think I do that below but anyways that's all this is doing and then we say if random dot rand range and this is the range 0 to 100 equals equals 0 uh, or equal to 0 then building is operating equals false so it's going to keep running and we don't know when it's going to stop and it, until it equals false because this every time it runs through this produces a new random number until it hits zero this won't stop so we're going to do shift enter and it looks like uh variables wrong so hold second building oh i didn't run the above code so i'm going to do import random building true and then let's run that one and then we can see the items for today are 68 items created so it ran 68 times before it outputted to zero so it, it's unknown so if we come up here do shift enter run that you can see now it ran till 17 so a while loop makes a lot of sense here and I think for re readability sakes it's really easy to understand and so here's the here's the same example but recreated as a for loop and this is where things get a little bit confusing and I think when I hear people say you should use for loops you know that's that's what I always use never not while loops it's confusing because it's like in this case it makes a lot more sense to be, for a while loop to be there so to show you visually kind of what's going on we're going to assign true and you can see that this is a list uh, there might be a different way to handle this but this is the way that I found and then you can see here this is what the output is we run this and I have a little bit more information shown here just so that we can see what's going on so this is the value that it predicted nine one item created so on through the rest of the list we have then um, you can see here zero it finally predicted zero pretty quickly five items created done total for the day is five so I can kind of see uh, if a while loop being a better option just because uh, visually it's like when I come back to this this makes sense um, but some folks and you'll hear it's all about preference or you know I guess what whatever you're more comfortable with but I could easily see you know doing both while loops or for loops uh, whatever makes more sense whatever is more readable because uh, to me this is this isn't as readable is the while loop up there but anyways uh, and what's there's something a, a little bit more interesting about this since we're working with a list and we're iterating through a list um, there's a bit some other things going on with it so I just want to visually show you so we start with uh, one item in that list building is operating and then we move and we append because we do append in in this we append a true to that list and that was the way that I found I could continually iterate through that list was appending to it the true value and so it continues to iterate through and you can see it, it growing in size and this one goes on f almost forever and then you can see finally down here at 231 items created it predicts zero or it it uh, outputs zero in that that randomized function and and then this is the list right at, right as it predicted so before it predicted this was the list and then that's when we say hey that equals false and then it outputs the total for the day is 231 so I thought that was interesting it's quite a bit different and if this was my option to go this route I don't think I would want to do a for loop because you could see where if the items became I mean, if this list got really big that could be I mean that could be huge uh, that could be a huge issue and so I could be I could this example could be totally wrong but I thought visually it was a good way to show it uh, that you know while loops could be useful it's it's all about readability and uh, how computationally heavy 
that one option is going to be over on another one. But anyways, I just wanted to show you guys that. I thought that was kind of interesting. And again, feel free to download this Jupyter Notebook. Everything that I create is free, even this video. You could download this video. It's in the uh, folder, so definitely check that out if you want. And before I jump off, this is just visualizing that, uh, what we're doing up here. And then also there's this link here that talks a little bit about when do I use a for loop and when do I use a while loop. This is in for JavaScript, but I think it applies to Python uh, because I was able to easily recreate that. And I've heard other folks talk about that it's all about preference, but again, I don't know. I may not know enough about Python yet, but anyways, check it out. Let me know if you find anything interesting. Hopefully, you learned something, and um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.